Good morning. Today we're going to talk about the intellectual underpinnings of the modern conservative movement in politics. And since I am a college professor and you are college students, I thought that we would start with a college group. Young Americans for Freedom, which still exists today, was a group, a collection of conservatively minded kids, um, many of whom will meet in a place called Sharon, Connecticut at the house of a guy named William F. Buckley, and they will commit to paper some of their views about what makes the United States a great country and what is worth conserving. They will feel that a free system requires a, an economic model like capitalism to sustain itself. They will feel that um, the United States is governed by the Constitution, which is the most perfect uh, system that has ever yet been created. They will feel that if the government is too large, it will encroach on the freedom of the individual, and that is not good. They want ordered liberty. So that is YAF, and they still fight for a lot of those values today. Now, I would be remiss, even though we're talking about the conservative movement, if I didn't mention kind of the, the opposite student group that kind of serves as a bookend in this history. So you have YAF on one side, and then on the other, you're going to have a group called SDS, Students for a Democratic Society form, and they are also going to issue a statement at Port Huron in Michigan. They're going to have more socialist um, ideology, uh, more socialist roots. They're going to be much more friendly to a more egalitarian economic system. Um, they want to push more democracy. They want to expand voices in politics. Um, they, they're, they're, they're very different from YAF in a lot of ways. Now, having said that, I like to point out both of these groups because I think that they express the tensions that have always existed in our society between free markets and having more voices in our political system. Um, to be honest, the United States, uh, we, like, think back to the 1800s. We were the most democratic society in uh, the world. <laughs> but as you expand voices, um, you, you, you have kind of a, you have a tension because capitalism is a hierarchical system just naturally. You're going to have some businesses succeed, some businesses fail. You're going to have different outcomes. It's not possible within a capitalist system for everyone to have the same material wealth. It just doesn't work that way. Uh, in democracy, you want, however, everyone to have the same worth as far as things like uh, their voice at the ballot box. And so it's, it's more like here we've got this even playing field in politics. What why do we have this hierarchy? And there's this, this kind of back and forth between these two systems, right? But I, I would say that in some regards, they, they complement each other, even though democracy and capitalism are always pushing and pulling one another. So, you know, I, I don't know. YAF is a group that is more on the right side of a worldview and SDS is more on the left side of a worldview and it's up to you to kind of formulate what you think is your position in the world. Um, I personally like a little bit from column A and a little bit from column B. Uh, but speaking about democracy, which SDS a little bit more of, uh, let's look at another conservative group that rises up as part of the new conservative movement in the 20th century. 